All right, so I want to go off topic here and talk about a, a specific movie. Uh, it's a great, great movie. I think it's an underrated movie. Uh, you know I'm a big, big fan of Quentin Tarantino, right? Yes. And one day we'll have a Tarantino episode, I think. But today I want to talk about a specific movie. Jackie Brown. I think is seriously one of the most underrated movies ever made. Even in Quentin Tarantino's catalog, it's underrated. You know, a lot of people overlook it. Uh, fantastic movie. I I enjoyed Jackie Brown a lot uh, when I first saw it. Even though I like it, it's probably one of the Tarantino movies that I've watched the least. Yeah. So when I do watch it, it's a treat because yes. I'll forget about parts, mm -hmm. and then I'll see them, and it's like seeing them again for the first time. But it's 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 familiar because it's Tarantino, and you know you know these scenes. You know it's it's fresh and. Man, what what a what a great cast. The cast is incredible in that. I mean, one of one of the best assembled casts. Even the small roles. All the roles. Um I love Bridget Fonda in that. And look, Bridget Fonda, she's like I like Bridget Fonda a little bit, but I mean you're not she's not a she was not a huge name. You didn't take her real serious. See, I'm not a Bridget Fonda fan, but I loved her in Jackie Brown. Of course. Lewis. Lewis. You know, that's look, we great. look. We all know how I feel about De Niro, and I liked him in that. See, that's and that's him. You know, being a part where it's outside of the norm for him. He's just an an old has been criminal. It's laid back, don't give a shit, fresh out of prison. Jackie Brown and you know maybe Tarantino movies as a whole. I think it helped establish what we expect from Samuel L. Jackson in movies today. Um. Obviously, he started it in Pulp Fiction with the whole bad motherfucker bit and all that, and Ezekiel. And, and all. Sure, and he's over the top. and But that is uh, a, an oddly specific character. You know, the whole Kang from Kung Fu conversation and and his, his journey, his righteous path and all that stuff. Whereas Ordell Roby and Jackie Brown, it's like you're talking about, man. It's like... A, he plays a type of dude. Right. He plays As, a Samuel L. Jackson type. Now, did he do some of that beforehand? Yes, of course he did. I mean, he's been doing stuff for a while. But uh, since then, it's like a lot of his roles are just a version of Ordell Roby. It's good that he started that development with Jackie Brown because even in Shaft, you know, uh, I see a lot of that character. But then... You go into Nick Fury, and I see a lot of uh, Shaft in Nick Fury. Oh, absolutely. So, with every character that Samuel L. Jackson plays, I think he brings an aspect of that new character development into a role. You know, I don't want to go as far to say, like we do when we say about some, some actors, that Samuel L. Jackson plays Samuel L. Jackson. But it's, it's like a persona. Like, like you're kind of what you're hinting at here. It's honestly, for a lack of a better term, he's the bad motherfucker. You know, he's not the only one. And when I say only one, I don't necessarily mean like a badass. We, uh, we let them get away with pretty much being themselves in a role because we like to see them be them. You know, Vince Vaughn is one of those actors Seth that Rogan. comes to mind. Seth Rogen is Seth Rogen. Yeah. Jesse Eisenberg. Plays Jesse Eisenberg in everything he's in. Sometimes a little more cocky than others, but yeah. Michael Sarah plays Jesse Eisenberg in everything he's in. <laughs> well, the fact is that Samuel L. Jackson does it better than anybody else. Oh, I know. I That's agree with that. That's why everyone loves Samuel L. Jackson. Because even when he's playing the bad guy, he's charming as hell. The whole bit when they're... Every time he goes to the uh, the bail bond office, and it, and he has the conversations with Robert Forster, like those conversations might be the best part of the movie. When you talk about Samuel L. Jackson, you know you're really talking about a different breed of actor. The movie Juice. Are you familiar with it? God, it's been a long time. His role in that is so memorable, and it's a small role. He works at an arcade. Uh, the kids skip school. They hang out in the arcade slash bar. 
uh, Samuel L. Jackson is the proprietor. And, you know, he plays the typical Zeus-type character he played in Die Hard with a Vengeance. Which you know, is my favorite Die Hard, by the way. But that character type that he plays, you know, because we were just talking about how he plays the bad motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, he also plays that no-nonsense, stodgy, you know, from the neighborhood type. They're almost like falling down. You know, here's the average man, civilized man, yep. uh, and he's put into a situation, backed into a corner, and has only one situ- like one way to react. The same way in Die Hard with a Vengeance, who's pulled into this world uh, beyond his control, and it's him being reactive to it. Well, you know, I can think of a, a couple of different movies where Samuel L. Jackson's in that same kind of mindset. Uh, one is, and I haven't seen it in a while, it's Changing Lanes yes. with Ben Affleck, where like kind of like the falling down bit you're talking about. Absolutely. He, you know, he's having a rough time of it, and this this smug asshole, you know, ruins his day, and it just, it, he snaps and goes after the guy. But uh, to me, probably the best example, and also a wonderful movie, is A Time to Kill. That movie gives me a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, you know. There are some triumphs in that movie, and the acting is superior. But what a sad story. Oh, absolutely. But, but uh, there, that, that example of Samuel L. Jackson playing that, uh, you know, Joe Schmo, average guy, maybe even a guy that's a little down on his luck. Mm-hmm. Uh, he and, literally lives on the other side of the tracks. Right. And he's pulled into this scenario beyond his control, and he reacts to it. Yes. And he does that very well, but at the same time, you can see him play Shaft or Mace Windu, these larger-than-life characters. All the way down to bit parts, like in Coming to America. Shortly after that, he was in Goodfellas, uh, which was, I think, Goodfellas is what got him kind of on the map to start getting big roles because that was still a small role. Uh, But one that's uh, near and dear to me is True Romance. Second favorite movie of all time. And Samuel L. Jackson has a tiny little bit in it and it's a ridiculous part and his lines are funny. I'm not going to quote them on here because they're pretty filthy. Another example of not him being underused but of a more subdued version of him is in Sphere. That was a good movie. Uh, uh, one of my brother's favorite. Uh, high on that movie. Uh, watched it not too long ago for the first time in many years. Mm-hmm. And right after I rewatched it, uh, the government releases footage of what looks like a clip from that movie, only actual footage in the world of a sphere that vanishes over the ocean. I will say this about that movie. And it's uh, not the only example of this. Sharon Stone scares the bejesus out of me. (laughs) She was in uh, Catwoman with Halle Berry, which was pretty fucking terrifying. I will say the one thing scarier than Sharon Stone is Cameron Diaz in in Vanilla Sky. That being said, I'd like to double back to Jackie Brown since we got off topic. Getting back to that cast, man. Robert Forrester, like... Robert Forrester's great, man. Robert Forrester is one of those actors that I never expected to like. and But you can't help it. He did have a bit part in Breaking Bad that was pretty solid. Really? What did he play in that? Uh, late seasons, he was the guy who smuggled you out of town and gave you a new identity. Are you familiar with The Black Hole, talking about Robert Forrester? I'm not. So this movie, you know, I watched it when I was a kid, and uh, it was one of those Star Wars kind of knockoff movies. Uh, I think there was a lot of those at the time. Uh, But my brother was a huge fan, and it was the first time I ever remember Robert Forrester being in anything. Correct me if I'm wrong, but was he not in Heroes? He is in Heroes. Exactly. Right. Like, And that's a... You know, hey, he's uh, Peter he, Petrelli's father. Yeah, and he's not playing a good guy either. Oh, not no, he plays villain very well. He does it well. Very believable in uh, that role. But, you know, R.I.P. Robert Forrester, Robert Forrester, you know, good guy. He's gone. Well, you know, talking about actors that were in Jackie Brown that played villains, you know, Michael Keaton, Beetlejuice. So, 
on, I believe, the original DVD special features of that when it came out. And I bought it the day it came out. Um, I believe that was a midnight release when I bought that. There's a bit about the scene between Pam Greer and Michael Keaton in the diner. And apparently that really wasn't scripted. They sat at that table for a while and the camera just rolled. And they went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And Tarantino put it together to make one of the greatest scenes he's ever filmed. Because just that conversation between them two at that table is amazing. Michael Keaton is my favorite actor. Okay. Uh, I love Michael Keaton. Um, I might take a bullet for Michael Keaton. Um, look, Michael Keaton scared the shit out of me when I was a kid with Beetlejuice. Yeah. He made me want to be a hero with Batman. Okay. You know, uh, my life, he made me cry. And Multiplicity, he made me laugh. Beetlejuice, man, it's definitely one of my favorite movies. It's a huge part of my childhood. It's a huge part of my adulthood. And I've said that before about things. He's Batman. So I think we'd be remiss uh, talking about Jackie Brown without talking about Jackie, Jackie Brown. Brown. Uh, uh, yeah, Pam that, Greer. So obviously sh that revitalized her as an actress and she did manage to get some other somewhat decent roles after that. Um, you know, she was an afterthought by then. She was, but in the man in the early days, she was a pioneer. Oh yeah, she did a lot for black women breaking into Hollywood. Boxy Brown, starring roles, man, and uh, that even though that sounds ridiculous, man, that's a a big step forward. Look, I don't care what anyone says. Pam Greer as Jackie Brown was hot. Look, the no, the way she portrayed Jackie Brown, no, she was sexy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Jackie Brown was sexy. Pam Greer brought the sexiness to the role. And look, she was easily 30 years older than me. When oh, yeah. Came out. I was a teenager when Jackie and, Brown and came I out. I saw that one was just like, I don't know who this is, but she is fantastic. I would f fly on her plane anywhere. About to say, man, she has a sex appeal that a lot of women today don't possess. Anybody can put on an outfit and a makeup. But, you know, when she's sitting there, Drinking a screwdriver in her robe. Yes, and, and she played that so smooth. Her part in that is great, and obviously without her, you don't make that movie. She is Jackie Brown. She is Jackie Brown. She owns that entire character. And it's, you know, that was the uh, first movie that Tarantino ever did that was based off of something. You know, that's based off a novel, Rum Punch, by Elmore Leonard. And... You know, Elmore Leonard's, uh, you know, crime novels and whatnot and, and capers and such. And it's a lot of fun. And Tarantino did such a great job with it. And I don't know without looking it up if it won any kind of awards, but it should have. Problem is, I think it may have came out the same year that Titanic did or very close to that. Not positive on that, but... Either way. I think at the time Jackie Brown came out, it was very underrated. I think it was passed over. And I, I would have to go back and check, but I don't remember it winning any awards. Which is a shame, because it was well-written, well-directed, and well-acted. That's Wes. And he's Corey. And we're the, the Trifleman. Trifleman.